hello and welcome back to my best of the year videos. Today we're going to talk about Plex Media Server. Come on, you knew this was coming. Today we're going to talk about the best NASes to buy at the end of 2020 for Plex Media Server. This is a subject I would say more than half of you that buy network attached storage devices, NAS, um, buy four. Plex is just this great app. And as much as I like a lot of the first party apps from QNAP and Synology and Asus Store and all of these companies and the, what they bring to the table to handling multimedia, some of them get really, really close but have still not quite surpassed Plex Media Server for me. I really, really like it. It brings a lot of the, user, the graphical user interface and uh, the utility and the information and the scraping of metadata that just looks like you see on the likes of um, like Prime Instant and Netflix and stuff like that. But it's the media that you own. You're not stuck to a subscription service. And the media you own, you get to watch in the most glossy, smooth, interesting way with Plex Media Server. But because it's a network attached storage device, it's yours. You control it. You can say who can see it and who can't. And it's all in-house. So all of the costs are all out the way, early doors, and then you can create a very bespoke system. So yes, I love Flex Media Server, and the three NASs we're gonna talk about today are the ones that I recommend for different budgets. Unlike my other best of videos, where I said there wasn't really any hierarchy, in today's video there is. I'm gonna go for small, medium, large. The three NASs we're talking about today are kind of budget, mid-range, top end. And those are the three best network attached storage devices for Plex Media Server that we're going to talk about. Before we go any further, I want to talk about the disclaimers. I want to talk about how these NASs were selected over all the others and how they could qualify. And also the one that got so close, that really, really got close to the end, but unfortunately is going to get the participation medal. It's going to get the, you got so close, but not quite there. So what were the disclaimers? What? How could a NAS qualify for my top three? And again, there's a link in the description to NAS compares where we've gone down the entire breakdown and go through the full disclaimers and all the NASs that nearly made it. But first and foremost, the NAS has to have been available for sale um, and, and in stock in the majority of the world uh, before October 31st, 2020. It doesn't have to have been released in 2020. And indeed, only you know two of the three NASs I'm going to talk about today were released this year. But... I will argue that if it's not been available up until that date, it shouldn't be considered because we've not had a time to play with it and test it, and there's not been enough time to see that it can stand by its power and potential. There are some NASs coming out towards the end of this year and the start of the next that are genuinely impressive for Flex Media Server. They're just coming out too late, and I'm afraid they're not making the cut. Also, on top of that, all of the solutions today have to have at least two years of manufacturer's warranty because if you don't have at least two years of peace of mind, I don't think you can trust that brand in something like network attached storage for a 24 7 device this thing's going to be on for ages whether you use it or not in stat in idle or active access two years of warranty is what i consider the medium and should be included with your device also i'm only looking at solutions that have got at least four bays of storage because you can tell me till you're blue in the face that hard drives are getting bigger with 16, 18, even 20 TB NAS hard drives and companies like Seagate, Iron Wolf and WD Red. But for me, in a RAID 1, you're going to lose 50% of your storage. So to have a good ongoing collection of multimedia to enjoy on a Plex Media Server with all your client devices, friends and family alike, I think at minimum needs to be a four bay, whether that's because you're going to buy smaller drives and have a RAID 5 or that you're gonna go for big drives and get some genuine future proofing there. Also, it has to be a combined hardware and software solution. Don't get me wrong, this video is targeting Plex Media Server pretty precisely, but the system has to have at least a good level of hardware and the first party software attributes as well for the following reasons. One, I want for good first party software because even though you're gonna buy the NAS for Flex Media Server, you're gonna to wanna to maximize your investment. You're gonna use it for backups. You're gonna use it for low level multimedia, for your podcast or maybe for downloads or maybe for work. Ultimately, you're not gonna use it just for Flex. I reckon you're gonna use it for two or three other things and the software inside should be indicative of that. And what I mean by hardware is that the system has to have enough hardware for both. Plex Media Server use and general use. A lot of companies bring out a solution that if you try to use it in Plex Media Server for even low level 1080p transcoding, which we'll talk about later, 
they end up using almost the entire system resources and you can't do anything else. And that's why all of these systems have been picked that they can be utilized for at least 1080p transcoding or 4K playback whilst at the same time be used for other things. That's what I mean by combined hardware software solution. And also all of the analysis that were considered before getting to the bottom, uh, the top three had to at least feature 1080p transcoding full and some or total 4K transcoding because that's the way multimedia is going and it has to be considered. So what was the one that almost made it? What was the participation medal? What was so close but yet so far? That was for me, and again this isn't part of our top three, it was the Locker Store 2. Now the Locker Store is available in 2 and 4 bay. We're not penalising the Locker Store 2 and 4 bay because you know there was a two bay there is a four bay version out there what got it so close but not quite over the line was simply that even though it had a quad core intel uh, cpu inside even though it had four gig of ddr4 memory in our plex tests earlier in the year it seemed to use a lot more hardware resources to get the job done than most other NASes that have that same hardware. It's still a very good NAS for Plex, and it did a lot of the transcoding that we put at it, or that we threw at it. But it was arguable that the amount of hardware resources it used, if you compare it against something like a 453D, or you compare it with a DS920, with the same level of memory and CPU, it didn't really give as much as it could. You could have boosted it with M2 NVMe caching, but that would have rigged the results a little bit there. And ultimately for me, that's why it didn't quite make the top three. It was very, very close. It nearly pushed one of the NASs on this list off the top grid there. But unfortunately, that was why it didn't make it. So what is my first NAS? What is the more affordable Plex NAS solution that is the one I recommend buying at the end of 2020? That is the QNAP TS451D2. This is the NAS that's been largely overlooked if i look at 2020 and i look at network attached storage devices that have featured not just on my uh, youtube and blog but across multiple platforms that do talk about network attached storage if i had to say two nazis that have been largely overlooked it was the synology ds 1520 plus i bet a number of you had forgot that even came out and the ts 451 d2 this dual core four bay nas with one gbe ports there no pcie upgradeability it just seemed to go under the radar it seemed to be like you keenap had released a bunch of really really good solutions uh, in the first two quarters of 2020 and then this came along and it seemed to be kind of that's an odd bird that one that's an odd duck it's kind of it seems to take a step down but really it doesn't arriving at around 400 to about 420 quid if you shop around this NAS device with its dual core um, Intel J4025 processor and um, uh, two, four or eight gig of DDR4 memory with a two and four gig arriving at a price point so close that you might as well go for the four gig performed extraordinarily well in Plex. A lot of it was due to the chipset and the simplicity of the architecture and QNAP's uh, increased support and um, connection with CAN or CAYAN, C-A-Y-I-N, support of um, H.265. It did extraordinarily well in my Plex testing. Hopefully in the description there are links to all of my Plex videos, but you will see that the, two, the 451D2, despite being a dual core NAS, did really, really well at Plex Media Server. It challenged a lot of the four bays, and that's why it ended up passing the Locker Store series, the, the participation medal NAS there, because it's, it managed to do more with less. And if you are looking for an affordable RAID 5 Plex Media Server NAS, you can do a lot worse than the 4 gig model of TS451D2, as it transcoded not only all of the 1080p that we threw at it, but it even in Plex Media Server with a Plex Pass hardware transcoding managed to enter and crunch through some of the top higher end 4K stuff as well. And I do recommend checking out that video. Now, the mid range, what is the Plex Media Server NAS that you guys should be buying if you've got a little bit of bunts, you're not looking at transcoding insane stuff, but you want to look at some low 4K stuff, you want to enjoy your Plex Media Server for one, two, maybe even three users at a given time. 
What's the NAS you should go for? Let's say it all together, the Sonology DS920 Plus. Although it wasn't an enormous leap over its predecessor, the DS918, it is arguable with its improved internal um, embedded graphics and that DDR4 memory, uh, 2,666 megahertz at four gig by default that can be upgraded to eight. It brought enough to the party to be a lovely mid-range Plex Media server now. It's even arriving at a price point not dissimilar to that of its predecessor at between 500 and 550 pounds if you shop around, including tax. This NAS 4 bay is expandable. It has M2 NVMe cache, which again, we're not going to include in this. They're just optional things. It performed very well in Plex Media Server, but it's worth highlighting that uh, Plex was the main reason that Plex didn't perform as well as it eventually did. And what I mean by that is the latest version of the Plex Media Server client has um, a horrible driver thing going on where it, the driver it wants to use to transcode is not the default driver. Do check out my Plex Fix video. It's out there. Just look up DS920 Plex Fix. You'll find it. And if you change just one line in the back end of the Plex Media Server app, and it uses the default driver, the DS920 performed stellar in terms of its performance at Plex Media Server. It's not an I Intel Core, it's not that graphical embedded Xeon that we talked about um, a little while ago, but in the 88X series, for what you are paying and what you are getting, it is definitely, straight down the middle, the best Plex Media Server NAS for mid-range users that are buying their first NAS for Plex. It's not going to crunch the top end 4K, certainly not in Plex Media Server, and barely natively as well. But with its large array of applications available outside of Plex to maximize your investment, and some great performance in Plex Media Server through multiple streams at once, we tested with both a local and a mobile phone device at once, looking at the same media, some high-end 10K, uh, 1080p I should add. It does very, very well, and for me, it will be recommended. Kind of wish it had 2.5 GBE ports though, right? So, what's the one I'm going to recommend? And anyone that's watched these other videos, they know, you know what I'm going to say. It's going to be that QNAP, the TVS 872XT, a NAS that has featured in lots of my best ofs this year and even peered into some of the ones last year. This is a 6-core, 8-generation Intel i5. It's got 16 gig of DDR4 memory that can go up to 64 gig. It's got 10G. It's got Thunderbolt. It's an 8 bay. It's got internal M2 NVMe caching bays. It's a beast. But more importantly, it transcodes insanely well. It transcoded pretty much everything we threw at it. It was able to change those files for playback and multiple streams at that. With hardware transcoding enabled with a Plex Pass, it gets even better. It, it is still to date one of the best solutions out there with the added benefit that if you download some of the um, third party created Plex HDMI output apps, because the first party app, I'm sorry, the third party official app is no longer supported. If you download some of the Plex Theater and Plex Home apps for HDMI and HD Station uh, 4, you end up with a standalone Plex Media server that can output via HDMI 60 frames per second into your TV with near zero latency, eliminating transcoding from the mix entirely, and with the added benefit that multiple users can use the now free resources internally to transcode remotely if they need to. Now, a number of you, I know I've said transcoding like 50 times in this video, still forget the need for transcoding and why transcoding is so important. Because a lot of us are thinking, well, no, my, my thing can just, my phone or my TV can play those devices. It's not as straightforward as that. A lot of the time, due to low bandwidth uh, at the source or destination device, or because you want a smaller version of the file because a big, clunky MKV 4K file at 4.8 gig is going to churn through your phone like gravel, you, what you want is a streamlined version, and that's why transcoding is so important, and that's why the TVS 872XT, with its arguably 
1900 pounds high price tag still brings a lot to the party and in terms of Plex Media Server still to date performs insanely well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Click like if you did and click subscribe to learn more and do visit the link in the description where I go through all of these results along with links to the performance benchmarks that we performed throughout the year and the years since their release. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.